so honored to have here one of my role models, Marjorie Krauss, the founder and the chairman, chairwoman of APCO Worldwide. Thank you for being here. Let me just uh, tell our viewers a little bit about you. Marjorie founded APCO uh, in the 1980s and uh, turned it into one of the most successful global companies in its field in the world. It's privately owned, and she was recently featured in Enterprising Women magazine, the front cover. You can see it right here. Um, it's a great honor for them. It's a great honor for us to have you here. Such a pleasure. Thank and a you. a great honor for me, too. <laughs> Marjorie will be keynoting our opening reception of the NYU New York University Conference on International Relations in partnership with the uh, recently established Leon Charney Forum on New Diplomacy at the University of Haifa. And so uh, I'm sure that our students, our faculty, our speakers, our fans, our friends will all be very excited to hear from you. How did you do it? How did a woman in Washington, D.C. in the 1980s manage to build almost single-handedly a massive global power like APCO? Well, I didn't come from this field. I was a high school civics teacher uh, when I started this, and I had been involved in getting students more involved in finding their voice and being involved politically. Uh, and so that was kind of the genesis. And it was a little bit of an accident, but I've always loved putting people together and solving problems. And really, that's what the firm does on a global basis. And so um, we started with an idea. And the idea was to, um, instead of, at that time, every firm had a specialty. Nobody was like working strategically across the landscape. So you had lobbyists and PR people and stakeholder engagement people and people who did investor relations. And for the companies or the organizations or the not-for-profits, they were just trying to accomplish their goal. They didn't particularly care what the discipline was. So uh, we brought together um, a group of people with all different backgrounds. Um, and so we really focused on problem solving or opportunity creating, however you want to look at it. And it, it was a surprise to me because it was so intuitive that this was a novel idea, that nobody was doing that. And it just kind of was one of those things that caught on. And today you're in so many countries. Today How many? we are, um, we have 32 offices. We're in about 25 countries. We have about 800 people. And we're still solving problems. And, and this world has a lot of problems to solve. And I have to say, as a, as a proud member of your uh, International Advisory Council, that I, um, I take great pride of, of being part of your, uh, of your you. advisory council. Well, you know, we, um, the one thing that I think spurred the growth, it was we're still a very quiet company. A lot of people don't know about it. And in our field, maybe that's a liability, not an asset. But we're, you know, we, we believe that the success of the firm is driven by the success for our clients. And so we don't really talk about ourselves a whole lot. But we try to work through uh, for our clients to do a good job. And hopefully that will result in them telling other people about us. And we really have grown a lot more on a viral basis. And the other thing is that we're majority employee owned. So we have a lot of energy. <laughs> we have a lot of entrepreneurs in the business who, um, you know, who find it, it's a great place to work. So the, this conference is, is about the emergence of, of new diplomacy, which is really, it's about many things, but it's mainly about the fact that it's no longer just government to government. It's also business to business. It's also city to city, people to people, community to community. And, and APCO is very well positioned to discuss the new emerging field of business diplomacy. What would you say business leaders should do in order to become relevant in the new diplomatic conversation? Well, it's really funny because business diplomacy is a term I've used for many years. Because it's the easiest way, I think, for business to understand why they need to work with people like us or why they need to have these kind of functions in their organizations. Because governments are represented by embassies around the world, and businesses don't necessarily have the same um, ability to operate in country and to understand. One of the pieces of advice I give almost every company is they have to figure out who their secretary of state is. Um, because somewhere along the line, they have to find that person who is going to be above their individual brands and who's going to speak for the corporation 
and can build those lasting relationships because it is a world built on relationships. Not everyone's as transactional as the U.S. Um, and so they, that is the best way to build reputational equity so that they can, um, when things go wrong, that they have, um, they're known and they don't just go to people when they're in trouble. And when things are going right, that they're their preferred provider or they're their preferred place to work. So this has huge implications on the bottom line for companies. And the, especially if they're working globally, companies that don't do this uh, will find themselves in a losing position rather than a winning position. So what would you say is the biggest challenge uh, for business leadership today in terms of embracing that social awareness or the or becoming force for good? I think that um, it's, it's probably a number of different things. I think in some cases for some of these companies, um, they haven't yet understood why uh, being a purpose-driven organization creates more value for the bottom line, although it's proven. And, um, you know, I think that a lot of these companies are moving in that direction, but they are not very agile about moving. And even if the CEO wants to move, it's hard to move the tank. Um, and so it has to start at the top, and they have to really be strongly committed to, um, to doing that. And I think um, then people will follow and employees follow, and the employees actually um, are the, the best catalyst for this kind of thing, you know, in, in terms of purpose. And I think if you are sure what your purpose is, it's much easier to go in a market, in a country, and demonstrate not only um, what, who you're going to employ and what you're going to bring to that country, but also your expertise and how it gets utilized, how you can help some of these countries, um, especially emerging countries, uh, how you can bring, bring best practices, how you can be a force for good in society how you can be a model employer and maybe bring along the smaller businesses that may not have the sophistication or the access. And so, you know, so I think there's like a whole pattern of things that people can do. So, you know, we are about training and educating the next generation of diplomacy practitioners at NYU, at Yeshiva University, where Mrs. Charney is very active as a philanthropist, Florida Atlantic University, where she established a chair um, University of Haifa, obviously, where we have the new center. Um, so a person like you, your message will resonate with people that are passionate about that. What would you say to a young person interested in becoming a practitioner in the field of diplomacy today? I don't know if there's anything more exciting, frankly. Um, I think that it's, um, it, it's a, a field that taxes all your skills. Um, it's, it's um, you know, you have to be um, well-read and, and understand the dynamics of different parts of the world, which is fascinating and changing all the time. And that's very valuable to these companies because you have to see around the corner, not just kind of what's in your view. Um, I think for a lot of the, the um, young people, it's a chance to also be a force for good. They can help drive the value proposition for the company. They can help uh, create this network of relationships. Um, and I think it's always changing and challenging. So it's not like you're in an industry that um, where you make a, the same product every day. Every day is different. And you're being relied on to be kind of the window to the world. And so I don't know what could be more exciting than that. Well, and I think it's a wonderful message, energizing and optimistic and inspiring. And thank you for that. And thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, and thank you for addressing us tonight. So, my pleasure. Thank you.